What if Britain was ruled by the Brown Party from 1936 on in Hearts of Iron 4? I swapped the ruling party and maxed out their support, and we are going to find that out today. Will they maintain their friendly relations with the Allies, or will they look to other places for friendship? If you enjoy the Hoi 4 ideology videos, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and ding the little bell so you get notified when the next one drops. Well, 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 glad to see you guys here. It's me, Chewy, your favorite Hearts of Iron 4 YouTuber. Today, we're going to be checking out Oswald Mosley in charge of the British Empire, as I would have explained in the intro. And the same thing will go with what we did for the Germany video. Everything will be the same except for the ruling party and the uh, popularity of the ruling party. Now, there's definitely going to be some changes to opinion, uh, but I think a lot of stuff it, with historical focuses, like these guys will ally. I'm almost guaranteed of that, but I think they may go down different focus branches depending on their ideology. I'm not 100% sure on that. Regardless, there's only one way to find out what's going to happen we're gonna go on up to speed five and unpause yeah and right now the british empire is just focusing down the industrial branches of their focus tree nothing gone with the government yet so time will tell of course we have the spanish civil war underway nothing new there germany is making their way down to that self-sufficiency with that autarky and sir stalin over here going down the path to uh kind of secure everything and get rid of trotsky of course. And for the next part in this series, I think we're going to go with like monarchist Russia day one. What do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments below. Right. And all of the colonies have broken free and are independent because uh, I think you have to be uh, like democratic Great Britain for it. I actually don't know the exact criteria here. Forgive me for my ignorance for Hearts of Iron. I have an EU4 pleb. But uh, yeah, we have an independent Pakistan. We have an independent India. These guys are owned directly, but that's because of a performance mod that I use because uh, this game runs like ass. Australia, of course, independent. NZ down here, independent. And South Africa under JBM Herzog. What a name. And yeah, I'm not really sure exactly what uh, AI Britain would normally do under vanilla circumstances, but these guys are exclusively working on this tree. Obviously, that means they're going to run out of these eventually but they may not even go down the government branches at all. I don't really know. I'm pretty sure they usually open up with steady as she goes in uh, vanilla. That's what gets me excited is like the weird wacky stuff that can happen when uh, things are changed without the AI's uh, consent, I guess. Still nothing too interesting going on with Sir Mosley over there on the British Isles, but we do now have a Bangladesh led by Kazi Ahmed, who has broken free from Pakistan, uh, which is historically how it happened. Pakistan was kind of the Muslim portion of the Raj that broke away from India, which is the historically Hindu portion. There's a lot more details to it than that, but that's kind of what you can understand. And then Bangladesh broke free from Pakistan because it's an exclave like hundreds and hundreds of miles away. So it, it does make sense that they would break free, but uh, in this timeline as well. Meanwhile, over in Germany, the Anschluss has not happened yet. It is mid-1937, so things are going to be picking up here very shortly, but uh, nothing quite yet. And interestingly enough, steady as she goes is the plan. So... They're sticking with the monarchy, I guess. I, I don't actually understand. <laughs> it is historical focus, so I guess that's probably the reason. But, like, it doesn't make sense when you look at who they have. Uh, they do have a little bit of the conservative party support, but I don't think they're going to be going back into power. I assume Mosley is going to stay in power. Germany and their little friend of Slovakia are preparing for the invasion of Poland, currently working on the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact with the Ruskies, meanwhile, steady as she goes for the British Empire, they are continuing to uh, basically exclusively do uh, economic focuses. They are indeed the leader of the Allies, but um, France is not in the Allies. Not yet, at least. I don't know when they generally do it, but I imagine that they would be by now. So I don't know. It depends on uh, if France and Britain both guarantee Poland, then they will obviously join the same faction. That's just kind of how the game works. But I don't know, this could be an interesting dynamic if they are not on the same side. And as things continue to heat up, Italy has joined the Axis. And when Danziger War finishes, that's when things are going to really start heating up, of course. Uh, at the current moment, Poland is only guaranteed by France, not the British Empire. So we'll see. They're also guaranteed by Lithuania. So <laughs> that's a thing. And Germany has indeed attacked Poland and France is the only person to join them. British Empire not involved in the conflict. And down goes Poland, gobbled up by the Germans, and of course they will split part of the land with the Russians due to the uh, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. And interestingly enough, the British don't even really hate the Germans. Minus 15 is not that bad. That's like slightly more than they hate the French, 
which I understand the British are like, they have to hate the French. It's kind of in their blood, but like they're historically allies, or at least in this timeline, they're allies. Right now, they are not, and they're actually kind of on par with uh, the brown shirts in Germany. So that's an interesting thought. I don't really know exactly what that's going to lead to. The Treaty of Warsaw has signed. Poland has been annexed, and uh, now it has been split with the Ruskies. Of course, now the Germans are going to uh, get the extra reacher slot, apparently, but then they're going to start pushing through the Benelux into France. Once France capitulates, I believe they will get a peace treaty, and uh, the war will be over. So... I don't know what will happen after that. Oh, right. This is that uh, that last patch, uh, BBA or whatever. The, technically, the Germans are at war with Ethiopia. Even though Ethiopia doesn't exist, they are an ally of Great Britain, or the British Empire, rather. And so, technically, they are at war with an ally of the British Empire. But the British are not called in. So, I don't know, man. Also, it definitely looks like the party support has changed quite a bit. I don't think it's like actively going up, but via events or something, the democratic ideology is definitely going up. Now it is time for the Germans to hit the speed bump. That is the Low Countries. And no surprise, they are just marching right through Northern France, very much unopposed. And just like that, the peace deal has been signed and uh, the Germans have actually taken all of this in a treaty, not just occupying it, they, it is now their land. So that is a very beefy Germany with 290 factories compared to the 178 of the Soviets. So the British Empire is not even close. Uh, they're probably going to try to align with them now that they're the only ones, but it's hard to say. The ideology lineup is, is a thing. I, I feel like the ideology should make them more friendly, but I don't know. The, the historical AI focuses makes things a little bit more consistent. But um, otherwise, it'll just be pure chaos. Whenever you go non-historical focus, it's just like absolute chaos. And so the British Empire has asked and been refused by a uh, fascist Romania to join their party because they have decided to go with the Axis. So the uh, the Axis grows larger still, and the Comintern will almost certainly not be able to fight them off, uh, especially if there is not, you know, constant invasions going on trying to uh, make a foothold in the uh, mainland European portions of the German nation. So it's hard to say how things are going to go with them. It may end up just being like Germany sweeps and then Britain just kind of, you know, buzzes off on their island and doesn't do anything. Be kind of a boring video, but we'll see how it goes. And it is 1940 and Germany declared war on the Soviet Union. And to be honest with you, they very well may dominate them. They are pushing them back incredibly quickly and the Soviets definitely have issues from the purge still, uh, though they're going to get great patriotic war, right? Or I, I don't know how they actually changed a bunch of that stuff in the uh, the rework here. But uh, yeah, the vision organization minus 15 is gonna be really hard on them. That is a lot of red dots on the screen for the Soviets. <laughs> it's looking pretty good for Germany so far. Now that's not something you see every day. The kingdom of Greece has joined the common turn. All right. Also, Germany and Great Britain have a positive opinion of each other at 10. So uh, we'll see. Meanwhile, the Germans are absolutely rolling through the Soviets, absolutely just dumpstering them. Uh, the losses are 50-50, which is kind of impressive. But uh, yeah, Germany is, is definitely going to win, or at least they may win. I don't want to speak too soon because we all know what happened last time. The Germans got excited as they were about to push on Moscow and Stalingrad. So don't count your chickens before they've hatched, Germany. Oh my gosh, I did not realize this. Yeah, Germany's not going to win this. There's no chance they're going to win this. The uh, logistics are already horrible for Germany. Minus 50,000 infantry equipment, 4,000 artillery, 1,500 anti-air support equipment. Everything is negative. Tanks, light tanks, mediums. Yeah, Germany's going to lose. They're definitely going to lose. Some funky stuff is going on here. It looks like the wars have merged. And uh, the British Empire has called India as our enemy into the Italian-British War because uh, they intervened on behalf of Ethiopia. I don't understand this because Ethiopia, like, is one province. Like, they're, how in the world? How does that exist? And the only reason this exists is because of this British province. I don't get this new thing with Ethiopia. Like, why do they exist long after they've capitulated? I don't know. I, I'm sure it has something to do with the, the historical, like, exiling of the king of Ethiopia and all that stuff. But, like, this is really weird. It's really weird. Uh, now, the British are definitely, like, doing okay. Like, they they just have to naval invade them. 
and the Germans are about to lose, so they may actually be able to get in on some of this. They're going to have to obviously split uh, the the what they're going to get out of the war with the Soviets, who uh, clearly have a lot of participation. But this definitely makes things a little more interesting. And with the German invasion of Denmark and Norway, of course, they will join the Allies as things have kind of consolidated into these wars. Now, people who are getting attacked by the Germans will almost certainly join either the Allies or the Comintern. But uh, at this point, I really don't know how the AI will decide that, but the British are making a decent push down in Ethiopia, getting some of the land back and they're transferring all of it over back to Ethiopia. So it looks like we may actually see a similar situation uh, to the actual World War II scenario, but this time the French are just gone. <laughs> Though they will almost certainly be re-released in the peace deal, though they may be a puppet of the British, which would be hilarious. The numbers have not gotten any better for the Germans, minus 65,000 guns, and they have taken over 2 million casualties in a war against the Russians. Uh, the British have lost a bit of men because they keep doing some naval invasions and getting them killed on the beaches, as is tradition with the AI, but man, these losses are absolutely insane. Meanwhile, Moscow just sits a few hundred kilometers away from uh, the German front line, as does Stalingrad. So it's anybody's game. And despite their heavy deficits, the Germans have taken both Moscow and Stalingrad, uh, though they don't have a Baku or this region down here. So the oil is probably not doing super good, but Romania obviously is on their side. I don't know. I, I thought that they were going to stall out and lose immediately, but they've already done better than they did in the real world. And quite a few months earlier as well. If you guys don't know the German invasion of Russia in World War II, stalled out in the winter of 1943, I believe, was the Battle of Stalingrad. And that's widely considered kind of the turning point of the war where things started to uh, go the other direction in terms of conquest. So this is definitely earlier. I don't know if that's a good thing for Germany, but it's definitely a bad thing for Russia because they didn't have as much time to build up. Meanwhile, Ethiopia, as well as the majority of the development down here in Africa, has been taken back on the side of the uh, allies pushing the Italians out of Syria and all that as well. And right now they are pushing across North Africa. Probably some good gentlemanly war going on over there, I'm sure. It's still an issue of British Empire invading Germany and then dying on the beaches. And the Soviets can only hold off for so much longer. They're still doing okay in terms of capitulation progress. They're hanging on. But um, if, if they capitulate, it's basically a game over for the British. The war between the Japanese and the Chinese over in the east continues on, and it looks like Japan has also invaded the Philippines. Uh, yeah, and that means they are definitely at war with a big, beefy United States, though the U.S. has not joined any factions there, a one-man wolf pack. And uh, so that is probably going to keep these guys distracted for quite a while. Also, funny enough, it's been like two years, and Germany still hasn't capitulated Denmark because they're holding Copenhagen. So... Instead of the war lasting, what is it, like six hours in real life, they're actually holding on for like two years, just hanging in there. Norway's a bit of a different story, though. They got split between Finland and Germany. So, yeah, looks like Vidkun's going to be put in charge down here, I suppose. And if there was any debate as to who the U.S. was going to be siding with, it's going to be the British Empire because Japan has declared war on the British Empire because they want their lands down here in Malaysia and Borneo. So, yeah. They messed with the bull. And yeah, it's it's over for the Russians. The Germans have broken through and uh, they're past the Urals. The Russians are going to capitulate any day now. And with the Treaty of Moscow, the Germans taking 164 states, puppeting a couple of people over around the area. Very funny, a Russian puppet set up in Tanatuva, apparently. Uh, Greece was annexed. Everybody was annexed. And uh, Bulgaria actually got a little bit of clay down here as well. So, yeah, things... Oh, I don't know, man. But, of course, the war goes on this time with a uh, very hurt German Reich. But uh, they are very powerful now. But uh, all of the land that they took over here without a puppet, they're going to have to garrison that. And their manpower pools will be feeling it, though uh, they currently have plenty to go around. Turkey has joined the war on the side of the Allies, and though they are considered a major power, they're not doing majorly good. In fact, I would say they are getting dumpstered right now. So, yeah, it looks like that is another thing that they tried that the Allies did not succeed in. So I'm taking a look at the casualties. It's pretty bad on both sides, but you can see Italy over here getting dumpstered by the British Empire with 1.6 million losses to them. Uh, but take a look over here. The British Empire with um, 400,000 losses to Muscovy, to the, the puppet, the Russian puppet of Tanatuva. 
What? <laughs> Meanwhile, China is out here literally losing every man, woman, and child of their country. Just kidding. There's way too many of them for that six million to even make a drop in the bucket. But uh, either way, it's looking pretty bad for them. Still getting pushed out of Turkey. And uh, the British Isles are safe, but... Uh, who knows what's going to happen from there? And sadly, it looks like the British Empire's downfall is upon us. And uh, it is determined that uh, going fascist as Britain, at least in day one, is not good. At least for the AI goes. Uh, it looks like uh, game over. Green Italy wins. So, yeah, uh, the allies crumble without uh, Britain's brave leadership by the looks of it. And uh, Germany reigns supreme. Can't say I was really expecting it, but like I said, I'm open to suggestions for future iterations of this run. Uh, like I said, Monarchist Russia is kind of the next one that I have on my radar. So let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more. Special thanks to ALS Gamer, Legrand Puba, Chio, Josh Kapchinski, Agent Rhino, Blonde Damon, Cannon Fodder, and many more. If you want to see your name here and early access to these videos, check out the join button below the video or the Patreon linked in the description.